section 3.1. Um, we want to figure out if these are functions. Let's see. Is this a function? And what a function means is we plug in an x value, we get out a specific y value each time. So y equals x squared minus 2x. Does that represent a function? Yes, it does, because if we plug in an x value, we get a y value. And then later, if we plug in that same x value again, we're going to get that same y value again, right? Okay, let's look at a list. What if we have, like, 2, 4, 6, 8, 9, 12, I'm just making it up. Is that one a function? Remember, the first number in each set of parentheses is an x value, and the second number is the y value. Is each x value associated with specifically only one y value? Yes. Yeah. So the x value 2 is associated with the y value 4. x value 6 is associated with the y value 8. Um, x value 9 is associated with the y value 12. So that one's yes. Okay, what if... We have, here, let me just make another list. 1, 6, 2, 8, negative 3, 5, 2, negative 3. What about that one? No. Why not? Because 2 can't equal, or it can't be 2, 8, then 2, negative 3. Yeah. So if you'll notice, the x value of 2 repeats, and there's a different y value each time. So this one is not plug in a number, get out the same answer each time, because one time we might plug in 2 and get out 8, and the next time we might plug out in 2 and get a negative 3. So that one doesn't work. We're not actually working with graphs at all today, so another day we will be talking about this in more detail, but do you guys ever remember learning about something called the vertical line test? Yeah. So that's something we'll be talking about another day, but the vertical line test is where if you imagine vertical lines through a graph and it crosses more than one point of that graph, then it's not a function. Okay, so we'll get back to that another day. Okay, we need to talk about function notation. Have we done that before in this class? I don't think so. Function notation is where we use this thing here which the way we say that is f of x or f at x sometimes is used but usually I'll say it this way f of x and it and what that does is that that notation replaces y so we use f of x instead of y okay um, the purpose of function notation is to allow us to name functions so that we can work with more than one and know that which one we're talking about. That's the purpose of it. Function notation <coughs> really is quite easy, but for some reason students try to make it harder than it is, and they let it confuse them. The whole idea of it is that if you plug in a number x into a function and get out a value y, that value y depends on the number x. So we're finding the value of function f the y value, at the value x. So the number in parentheses tells us what value of x to plug in to find the value of the function, which is y. But we don't really, we're not calling it y, we're just calling it this. Okay, now that I've thoroughly confused you, let's look at an example. Okay, so let's suppose f of x equals negative x squared plus 2x minus 3. So what have I done differently in this equation than I would normally do? Same value out of both points. Yeah, instead of it being y equals negative x squared plus 2x minus 3, I've done f of x. The f of x is just replacing the y so that I can call this function, function f. And I might have a different function called function g and a different one called function h or something so that I can differentiate between which one I need to use at the time. Okay. So now we're going to find some function values. How do I find f of 0? What does that mean I'm going to do? 
Yeah, instead of putting an x in the parentheses, I'm putting a zero in the parentheses. That means that the value of x that I'm using is the value zero. I want x to equal zero. So I'm going to plug in zero everywhere that I have an x. And what's the answer? What's the value of the function at zero? Negative three. So the value of the function at zero is negative three, or the function at x, or the function at, um, or a function of x, x equals zero, the y value is negative three. Let's do another one. F of negative one, what does that mean I'm gonna do? Plug in <laughs> negative one. So that gives me negative one squared is positive one, so I get a negative one minus two minus three, which gives me negative six. Okay, what if I just ask you to find f of x? What does that mean? It might seem like a silly question. It's really If the x is in the parentheses, then what do I put in for x? x. I'm just basically asking you for the original problem. What if I ask you to find f of x minus 2? What does that mean? That means I'm going to plug in that x minus 2 everywhere that there's an x. And then generally it would also mean that you want to simplify that. So to simplify it, you're going to have to FOIL this thing. You're going to have to distribute the 2. So let's go ahead and FOIL this. x squared minus 4x plus 4, right? and then distribute the negative, so negative x squared plus 4x minus 4. Then let's go ahead and distribute this part, so plus 2x minus 4, because I'm distributing that. And then I simply have this negative 3 at the end. Now can I combine like terms? So I'll end up with negative x squared plus 6x minus 11. Do you get the idea of using function notation? Okay, the next thing is finding the domain of a function. Do you guys remember what domain is? Is it like a Uh-huh, the domain is, is the x value, the range is the y value. We did say that, I never wrote it down, but. Okay, when you're finding the domain, you're trying to figure out what the x value can or can't be. For example, if I wanted to find the domain of f of x equals 2x plus 3, what numbers can I choose to plug in for x? I choose anything? Yeah, I can plug in anything. Anything works. So guess how I answer that question? There's two ways to answer it. You could either say all real numbers, or the other way to answer that would just be to do interval notation and show that that answer can go, the x values can go anywhere from negative infinity to positive. Have we done this interval notation before at all? Not really. Okay. Well, it's something we'll have to learn maybe a little bit as we go along. In fact, that might be an important thing for today. I'll try and create a video about it maybe. Anyway, so interval notation is where you use parentheses when it's not equal to, and you use brackets when it is equal to. So you can't ever get to infinity. So that's why we use parentheses on infinity, because we can never actually get there. It doesn't exist. Anyway, okay, let's d look at a different one. f of x equals 2 over x squared. Can x be anything this time? Why not? x cannot be 0. We cannot have a 0 in the denominator. We cannot go 0 squared and have a 0 in the denominator. 
So we can plug in anything but zero. So we can list that answer as x is such that x is not equal to zero. So it's everything but zero. Or we could do it with interval notation, negative infinity to zero, zero to infinity. How does that not include zero? How is this leaving out zero? How, does this, how is this any different than this? Do you remember? It's something I just talked about where I said if you are including a number, you have to use a bracket. So a parenthesis means we don't actually include that number. So that means it's every number from negative infinity up to zero, but not including zero and then not including zero, and then every number up to infinity. So point 0.1 is okay, point zero zero 0.001 is okay, but zero is not okay. Do you get the idea? Yeah. Typically, I, I think the book generally uses this version <coughs> instead of this. This gets a little complicated. So it's perfectly fine to just tell me what x cannot be. In fact, I tend to be lazy and might just write it as x is not equal to zero instead of doing all the set notation mumbo jumbo like I did here. Anyway, that's officially how the set notation should look, but this is fine. Okay, let's look at another one. Um, okay, is there anything that's going to make that denominator zero? Since this is a square, if I plug in 0, 0 squared is 0 plus 1. Is that going to be 0 in the denominator? No. no. And because of the square, if I plug in a negative number, like a negative 1, what's negative 1 squared? It's still a positive 1. And so positive 1 plus a positive 1 is 2. I don't think I'm ever going to get 0 down there. Do you? Because of how it looks? In fact, you can check that by saying, let's see, x squared plus 1 cannot equal 0. So let's go ahead and solve that. That means x squared cannot equal negative 1. Well, is x squared ever going to equal negative 1? No, because if you try taking the square root of both sides, you can't take the square root of a negative number. So that means there's nothing that's ever going to make that 0. So this one is also going to be all real numbers. Okay, one more example. Okay, tell me about what, square, what you can plug into square roots. You can only plug square roots into, or positive numbers into square roots, okay? So if I plug in the number 0, will that work? <coughs> yeah, because 0 plus 2 is still a positive number 2. What if I plug in a negative 1? Be careful. Negative 1 plus 2 is still a positive 1, and we can take the square root of a positive 1. What if I plug in a negative 2? Yeah, negative 2 plus 2 is 0, and I can do the square root of 0. But what if I go down to negative 3? No. no, now I've gotten to numbers that won't work. So the way to figure that out, so first of all, let's make a note, can't be negative. So in other words, we're going to take the stuff that's in the square root, we're going to set it greater than or equal to 0, and we're going to solve that. So x is greater than or equal to negative 2. And that can be our answer, or we can list it this way. Oh, I should have done a bracket. Why should I do a bracket this time? Because it's equal to. The equal to makes it be a bracket. It can be equal to negative 2 and then anything bigger than that. But smaller and we get a negative number in our square root. So this is our domain. Okay.